In 1994, executives from the seven largest tobacco companies in America were summoned to Congress to explain themselves. In their testimony, the executives said that smoking cigarettes was not addictive. They were lying. They'd known all along about nicotine addiction, yet they continued to sell cigarettes. It was too lucrative to stop. Millions died as a result. Eventually, a wave of lawsuits forced the tobacco companies to admit that they knew this and to shell out hundreds of billions of dollars to victims and their lawyers. Suppressing smoking became a national priority. America understood that hurting people in order to get rich was wrong. Doing it on purpose is criminal. All of which raises serious questions tonight about Silicon Valley, about what their products are doing to this country, particularly to children, and how much tech executives know about the potential harm caused by what they're selling. Already, psychiatric research has produced some ominous findings on this. Social media use is connected to anxiety, depression, and social maladjustment, particularly among adolescents. The more time kids spend online, the unhappier they are. Data from the CDC show that suicide rates for teen girls in America are at a 40-year high, and they're way up for teen boys as well. Does technology play a role in those deaths? And for that matter, in a number of other serious pathologies that appear to be rising in America. Sean Parker seems to think so. Parker is not a research scientist. He's even more authoritative on this subject. He was Facebook's first president, and he helped design that website. Parker just gave a remarkable interview to a reporter from Axios in which he admits that he and other Facebook founders knew from the very beginning they were creating something harmful and addictive. We need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while um, because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post or whatever. It's a social validation feedback loop. It's exactly the kind of thing that a, that a hacker like myself would come up with because you're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. And I just, I, th I think that we, you know, we, the inventors, creators, you know, and it's, it's me, it's Mark, it's the, you know, Kevin Systrom at Instagram, it's all of these people, um, understood this consciously and we did it anyway. This is a bombshell. Imagine if the Sackler family, makers of the painkiller OxyContin, admitted they knew their product was likely to addict millions of Americans to opiates, but, quote, did it anyway. Now, that's pretty much exactly what happened with OxyContin, by the way. But so far, the Sacklers have been wise enough not to say so in public. Sean Parker isn't quite so guarded. In his conversation with Axios, Parker repeatedly describes Facebook like an addictive drug, which, of course, functionally it is. When he and his partners designed their product, Parker says they kept one question in mind, quote, how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible? The answer they found was with a steady stream of dopamine hits to your brain in the form of likes, comments, and new posts. Parker acknowledges Facebook has become an epidemic that is devastating this country. Quote, it literally changes your relationship with society and each other, he said. God only knows what it's doing to our children's brains. Let that sink in. Imagine how you would feel if you actually believed you had injured the brains of millions of children. Sean Parker does not seem especially concerned by this. In fact, in his interview with Axios, he brags about how rich it has made him. Quote, because I'm a billionaire, I'm going to have better access to health care, Parker said. I'm going to be like 160, and I'm going to be part of this class of immortal overlords. You know the expression about compound interest? Give us billionaires an extra 100 years, and you'll know what wealth disparity looks like. The tobacco executives suddenly look decent by comparison. Yet unlike the heads of Philip Morris and R.J. Reynolds and Laura Lord, Sean Parker and Mark Zuckerberg have not been hauled before Congress to account for themselves and what they've done. Why is that exactly? You'd hate to think it's because Silicon Valley gives far more money to politicians than the cigarette makers ever did. But who knows? Maybe there's a connection. We'll start asking members of Congress about it.